Hi YouTube, today as part of my contribution to my own art challenge, I'm going to be doing a cardinal in the style of Van Gogh. The idea for this challenge came from uh, a piece that I did last year as part of another artist's challenge. Uh, we were all supposed to paint the Starry Night and I had so much fun doing it that I thought it would be fun to introduce it into my own channel. I'm starting on an 18 by 24 canvas straight out of the packet. I haven't gessoed or primed it. All I did was I copied my reference photo in using watercolor pencil. And now I'm going to start to incorporate some of Van Gogh's style into it. I'm using blue to sketch this uh, project. I don't want to introduce any black because Van Gogh was a master of color. So I'm going to use a primary palette and I'm going to mix all of my colors. Once I have a clear design, I'm gonna use a synthetic sponge. There I am uh, putting it in water uh, to create some values and start giving me a sense of what I wanna do with this composition. I wanna incorporate uh, the style of the starry night for my background. So I'm doing a lot of circles and swirls to indicate kind of the wind. Uh, those of you who have followed my channel uh, probably noticed that I'm on a bird kick so I'm mixing my style with Van Gogh's style in this project. As I said before, I'm using a limited palette. I'm using titanium white, burnt umber, naphthol crimson, phthalo blue green shade, and cadmium yellow deep hue. The brushes I'll be using today are brights, and angle brushes in various sizes. Once I'm done with my sketch, I'm gonna start blocking in with the first layer of paint. I'm working on the branch. I'm using burnt umber uh, mixed with white. None of the darks that you'll see are actually black. It's all very dark hues. I'm playing with color theory to create the illusion of black rather than actually using black. And I want to thank everybody that's participated in this challenge. I know it was a little short notice. I had this idea very last minute and I just decided to throw it out there because then I, if not, I would have had to wait an entire year to create this challenge. I'm definitely doing another Van Gogh challenge next year. A lot of you reached out to me saying this was a great idea, but you couldn't do it this time because you had uh, you were working on commissions or you had other projects going on. And I totally understand that. This is just the first of a series of challenges that I'm going to be posting uh, on YouTube. I'm thinking of doing a challenge a month. I'll announce it at the beginning of the month and then I'll give you the entire month to complete the challenge. That way. Uh, we all have enough time to come up with a really cool idea, a really cool concept. And then at the end of the month, I'll be collecting all of your artwork and featuring it on a video. One of the keys to achieving the, the look of Van Gogh, in my experience, is to work in layers. Uh, as you can see in the video, I'm slowly building up my underpainting. I'm not worried about covering all of the canvas in this pass. I'm just starting to give an indication of lines using broad strokes uh, in various colors and various mixes. Another important thing to keep in mind is that you're gonna be in the awkward phase for a really, really long time when working in this style. It doesn't come together until the very, very end. So if you're in the middle of the painting and you're going, oh, this looks horrible, just keep adding layers. Don't stop because it, it all comes together at the end. This week was a little crazy for me. I had a lot going on. Uh, and on top of that, I've been having really, really bad insomnia for the past three or four days. I don't know if you can notice in my energy levels and my voice. I don't know if it comes across, but I'm really, really tired. Uh, my thing with insomnia is I'll go to bed reasonably, like at, at a good hour, and I, I don't have any problems falling asleep. My problem is staying asleep. I wake up at three in the morning for absolutely no reason, and it's like, yay, it's like in the morning, it's like I have so much energy, and then I can't do anything because 
if if I start if I decide to start painting at that time, then I'm gonna stay painting, and then it's gonna be like noon, and I haven't slept at all. So all I have to do, all I can do, is just stay in bed and try to fall asleep again. That usually happens around five in the morning. So then I sleep from five till ten. So then I can't do anything in the mornings. Uh, I'm lucky that I work. Uh, in the afternoons, so it doesn't interfere with my job at all. I have plenty of time to recover before I have to start uh, teaching. Uh, but, oh God, it's it's gotten really bad. I think it's a change of seasons. It also affects me. Uh, I can't wait for summer. Summer is when I sleep the best. And what I mean by that is I'll get a decent seven-hour uh, sleep pattern going on but then as soon as it starts getting colder it's it's back to my weird crazy habits so now what I did is I realized I had a lot of the canvas showing maybe I should have toned the canvas before I started this project so I applied a yellow glaze over the whole background to make it easier for me to 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 work on it the white of the canvas was getting really distracting. I, uh, it, that's one of my biggest pet peeves with my own work. I, I hate seeing the white of the canvas. So uh, I was too focused on covering the white canvas and not focused enough on making sure that everything flowed nicely. So toning the canvas definitely helped me with that. I could shift my focus to actually working on the design. So as I said in my last video, Van Gogh is one of my favorite artists. He's one of my art heroes. Uh, and one of the things I love about his work is the amount of color and the way he uses color to create the illusion of form and the illusion of shadows. He plays a lot with complementary colors uh, uh, to create his shadows and his lights. So I wanted to incorporate that into this project. I probably should have said this at the beginning of the video, but um, I, I, I'm a hot mess. Uh, it, definitely this week I'm a hot mess. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Uh, I, as you can see, I do art videos and I talk about my process and I try to demystify some of the misconceptions that we have about art and what, what being an artist uh, really is and what the artistic process is. So now the other thing that really makes this look like a Van Gogh painting is the outlines. Van Gogh outlines everything in his subjects. If you look at his paintings, you'll see a very bold outline uh, in all of his shapes and all of his forms. Uh, now that I've incorporated that into my subject and the leaves, it really starts coming together. At this point, it's slowly coming in together. Uh, I still have big chunks of color, mainly in the bird, that I need to address. But first I need to really define uh, what's going on in the background and make sure that that won't compete with my subject. One thing I'm sure not doing on this one, and I might uh, rethink about that if I try to do another piece in Van Gogh style, is I'm not doing any impasto. Van Gogh used a lot of paint. You can definitely see it if you've ever seen a, a Van Gogh in real life. You can see the texture from all the amount of paint that he uses. Uh, I did not do that in this, in this project but it's something that I, I want to start working with and maybe incorporating into my own style uh, in, in future projects. This project took me four hours from start to finish. It was a relatively quick project uh, for a piece of this size, especially for me. Uh, I usually, uh, when I work in bigger styles, and even though 18 by 24 isn't really that big, it's leaning towards the bigger side. Uh, I tend to spend between 8 or 10 hours on a piece and obviously the bigger the canvas the more time I will spend on it uh, but this this style really goes on pretty quick it's you work very very fast and very aggressively and uh, 
you get a lot out of you. Uh, I can definitely see if someone is, for example, angry at something or sad at something or mad at something, uh, you paint in the style and you just let it all out. It lends itself to that. It definitely felt like an emotional discharge for me. Another thing I noticed is that I stopped looking at my reference photo almost uh, right away, which is unusual for me, especially in, in the later the latest projects that I've been doing because I'm, I'm trying to improve in my realism. Uh, I stopped very early on in the process and just started painting what I felt rather than what I saw. It was a really freeing experience, almost therapeutic. I, I highly recommend it. If you've never painted in this style, try it out. It's really cool and you learn a lot. I certainly feel that after painting this, I have a better grasp at how to use complementary colors to create my forms and my shadows and my values rather than relying on creating a grayscale underpainting and then glazing over it. And I'm not saying that doing grayscale studies is a bad thing. I'm a fan of it. I actually use it a lot in my work, especially uh, for commissions. When people commission me to do portraits or pet portraits, I need to make sure that whatever I'm painting looks exactly like either the pet or the person. So uh, grayscale is the easiest way that I've found to achieve that and then glazing color over that. But painting a La Prima is also a valid option and uh, this is not a style that I usually uh, work in and working in this piece I feel like I have a better understanding of how to paint a la prima how to just dispense uh, of my grayscale studies and just put the color on the canvas right away and I'm working on my final details and that's it. I had a lot of fun with this project. I hope you enjoyed watching. Have you subscribed to my channel yet? I have new art videos every Thursday. Thank you so much for watching. My name is David Cavallon and I'll see you guys next time.